Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. Today's learning objective is in green and we are learning to identify the assumptions related to a normal distribution model. So before we start listing our assumptions, let's draw a normal distribution model because most of the assumptions come from the, the shape of a bell curve. So on the left here, I'm going to write down one, two, three, four, and five. And that's because there are five assumptions that underpin a normal distribution model. So looking at our graph, we can see one peak that's typically in the middle of our graph. And our peak is just there. So the first assumption, one peak means our data must be unimodal. If it's not unimodal, then it's not a normal distribution curve. The next one is if you draw a line down from that peak, we can actually see the left hand side and the right hand side are mirror images of each other. That suggests that any normal distribution model, there must be an element of symmetry. And that leads to our second assumption, normal distribution models must be symmetrical, or the, the shape of data where you're relying on your model, there must be an element of symmetry to this. The third one, this one's not as obvious from the graph, but there must be no upper or lower limits. And this relates to the graph itself, because a normal distribution curve model, it starts at its most likely point in the middle, and it becomes less and less likely. And in theory, this line actually goes on forever. It always becomes less and less and less and less likely but it never becomes impossible. And that's why there is no upper or lower limits, because let's say the, this was measuring the test scores and the highest test score you could get is 100%. In theory, a normal distribution model will carry on past 100%, but those scores beyond 100% are actually impossible to get in the real world. And that would be an example of where maybe this assumption would fall short in real life. So switch back to the white pen. The next assumption is the tails are unlikely to occur. So that means the right hand side and the left hand side, those tails are very unlikely to occur when compared with the middle of our data. And that's because in a normal distribution curve, you would expect most bits of data to fall near the middle or near the mean, and you would expect relatively few bits of data to fall within the tails. So that means if your tails are not unlikely to occur, maybe another model is more appropriate. And the final assumption, not obvious from the graph, but the data must be continuous. And that is something that can be measured with decimals. And that's not whole numbers. Um, as an example, if you're measuring something, it can be three meters, but it could also be 3.142 meters. And that idea, we can make our measurement more accurate by including decimals, suggests that it would be continuous data. An alternative is, if you think of maybe a football match, and you've got a goalie and a ball, every time you score a goal, you get one point. And then if you score another, you get two points. And if you score a third, you get three points. You can never have 1.5 goals. You can never have 2.75 goals. And because there's 
because it's only measured in whole numbers, that means this would not be continuous data. That would actually be an example of discrete data. So hopefully in your notes book, you've got an understanding or an explanation of the five assumptions that associate a normal distribution model. Most of those assumptions come from the physical shape of a bell curve. Hopefully you found this video useful.